Welcome to reading part two, tackling reading passages. In the first part, we discuss how to eliminate answer choices. In this section, we will discuss how to tackle the reading passages. We're going to utilize the four steps. One is to scan and underline the answers for lead words and phrases. Two, underline those lead words and phrases in the answers. Three, skim paragraphs and scribble a quick note in the margins. And four, answer the questions. Step one, scan the answer choices for lead words. When you see a reading passage, the first thing you want to do is go to the answer choices. You want to underline the lead words and phrases in the answer choices. As an example, for number one, Jeremy Bentham probably would have said they're lawyers. Important words that you want to underline would be Jeremy Bentham, lawyers, and said. Two, the author states that the common law differs from the civil law and that what are important lead words and phrases in that sentence. Common law differs from the civil law. Three, according to the passage, Peters differs from Jefferson in that you will underline Peters differs from Jefferson. Now, some questions don't have lead words. They are, it can be reasonably inferred that the, authors, uh, that the author believes that these are questions that deal with inferences. The second sentence is, which of the following conclusions is drawn by the passage? Conclusions. Sentences and questions that deal with conclusions and inferences, those don't have lead words. You want to save those types of questions to the very end. And remember, you've already figured out which, passage are e which passages are easiest for you to answer. So you'll go to that first passage and you will do this process. Don't read the passage first. First, go to the answer choices and scan those answer choices for lead words. The second step you will do is scan the passage for lead words. So anytime you see a lead word that you answered, that you underlined in the answer choices, underline it in the reading passage. Even if it isn't the same exact word, you want to underline it. For example, modern art forms and modern styles of art are not the same, but they're similar. So you want to underline that. So step one and step two together should take you about one minute to do. Now the third step is to skim and scribble. Now you don't want to read the passages for understandings. You just want to skim them for an understanding and write a quick note in the margin for, for your understanding. So this should take you about 60 seconds. So you want to focus on the first two sentences to try to get an understanding of the passage. Once you realize what the passage is about, scribble a small note in the margin next to that paragraph. Do not try to know everything. You are simply skimming trying to get an idea about the paragraph. Pay attention to those trigger words and those are transitions and you can use these in your writing as well. So a list of trigger words would be despite, however, but, although, nonetheless, in spite of, on the other hand, on the contrary, yet, notwithstanding, ironically, rather, unfortunately, therefore, hence, consequently, while. Wow. Now step four is you want to answer those questions. Go back to the questions that you've underlined. If you understand the question, match lead phrases to lead phrases. I mean lead phrases to lead phrases in the paragraph, then answer the question. If you don't understand the question, put the question in your own words, then try to ma match the question to the phrases that you've underlined in the passage. Answer the question. Sometimes you have to go to um, one line or one line above or one line below your underlined lead word or phrase to answer that question. Reading. Now if you read the passage and you still don't know how to answer it, practice eliminating those answer choices like we've um, discussed in the part one. If you absolutely can't get the answer, guess and keep going. After one pass, if you have questions left on that passage, go through one more time. And that's why I, I kind of push you a little more to answer the questions so you can have that extra time to go back through if you need it. Remember, don't waste time on questions you cannot figure out. Now, what about those non-underlined questions? 
And the first type of none underlined question would be state of mind questions. An example of that would be the author's attitude towards blah, 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 blah. And you have skeptical, approving, concerned, helpful. You want to turn this type of question into a true or false question. For example, was the author skeptical? Is that true or false? If it's false, you know that's not the correct answer. If it's true, you know that is the correct answer. Was the author approving true or false? If it's true, that's the correct answer. If it's false, it's not. Again, turn these types of questions into true or, for, or false answers. The second type of um, questions that you want to say to the end are vocabulary and context questions. For instance, in line 79, the word transported is used to mean you want to use context clues. Try to have a synonym for transported that you can replace with an answer choice. And whichever answer choice closely matches your word that you have thought of in your mind, then you have the right answer. Well, your right answer. Third types of questions are except not least questions. And you want to say these as the penultimate questions, meaning they're not last, but they're next to last. And you're going to use your scribbled notes to correctly answer these questions. That's why it's so important to scribble a little note to yourself because they can come in handy with these types of questions. Now, Roman numeral questions are the last questions to answer. Again, you're going to look at your scribble notes. These are concerned sometimes with um, how to order the passage. And again, eliminate answer choices that don't work. You want to take a second pass through the passage to make sure that the ones that aren't eliminated are correct. And remember, if you're running out of time or you just don't know, letter of the day. Another trick for Roman numeral questions are to try to figure out which Roman numeral comes first and which other Roman numerals have a type of relationship with them. And that can help you get the correct answer. Now, how to improve your reading scores. Um, can you comprehend? Can you figure out main ideas, tone, theme? There will be practice on the blog. Again, you want to improve your basic comprehension skills if this is something that you struggle with. Read, 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 read. And you have to read good stuff. I'm talking about magazines um, such as New York Times or Business Weekly or any book, I mean magazine that concerns itself with a type of critical lens. You can also look at textbooks. Um, if you have siblings in college or you can even check out The Goodwill. But you have to read good stuff. Try some literature. Um, pop fiction, not so much because it wouldn't be training you with the necessary skills that you need. Get into the habit of doing this. Um, this next tip, especially if you're on your way to college. If you don't understand a word while you read, look it up in the dictionary. Um, it was something I struggled with, but keep a running vocabulary list. You know, don't be lazy about this. Just get in the habit of having a little pocket dictionary with you as you read a piece of paper, scribble it down, the meaning, it really works. Now you want to practice the four-step technique with actual ACT test questions. Review the answers. Try to figure out what you're doing wrong. And guess what? You know, there are other passages you can use and look at on the blog. If you look in your workbook, you have a section to practice the four techniques on complete with the answer choices. And the last step is don't be intimidated. If you're prepared, you will do well. There's no need to be frantic. Great. I hope this helped, and I'll see you in the next section.